Today I'm sharing an update on my perpetual bone broth. I'm on batch three. Is it gelatinous or not? Let's find out together. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest. I'm a former New York City girl, but I live the simple life now with my sweet husband here in the Texas Hill Country. And this channel is all about cooking from scratch, living naturally, and creating a cozy home with charming thrift store finds. So if you're like me and you want to live the simple life no matter where you live, be sure to subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, as you know, I've been on a little bit of a mission making perpetual bone broth because I'm a firm believer that you can reuse your bones to make multiple batches of good gelatinous bone broth. But exactly how many batches can you get out of one set of bones? And be assured that it will be a gelatinous batch of bone broth. Now, my second batch did come out gelatinous. And that didn't surprise me because as I've shared with you in previous videos, it's very important that you always have one set of bones that I refer to as my insurance policy or your insurance policy. And those are bones that are high in cartilage. So you can have your shanks, you can have your marrow bones, but you also need to add your insurance policy bones. And what are those? Those are your oxtails or your neck bones or your knuckles or your patellas, or sometimes they're called patella femurs. And if you have one, at least one set of those bones in your very original batch, I, am, I almost positively know now because I've done it, that your second batch will be gelatinous. But you do need to have those high cartilage bones in there starting in your first batch, because in your second batch, they'll still have some cartilage on them. So when they go into the acidulated water to simmer for the 12 hours, that cartilage will break down, release collagen, and your second batch will be gelatinous. When I just want to clarify, we're speaking about beef bone broth here. We'll move on to chicken, broth, <laughs> chicken bone broth in the future, but right now we're just going to focus on beef bone broth. Now this is my third batch of beef bone broth uh, from the same set of bones, and I did have uh, my insurance policy bones in that original batch, which were oxtails. And what I want to say about this is that I only have a small amount here because I've used some of this to dehydrate. I made a dehydrated bone broth and it came out great. And I definitely will, if that video is already out, I'll link to it, uh, but if not, uh, keep your eyes open for it. And uh, it's called Dehydrating Bone Broth and it's wonderful. Now what I wanna say is with each successive batch of my perpetual bone broth, beef bone broth, what I've done is I've started the process just as if I was making my initial batch. I put my uh, marrow bones in to soak in the acidulated water while I browned what I had left. So even though the oxtails were sort of falling apart and the other bones, everything was sort of falling apart, I browned them up and I got a nice deep rich color on them. Then I put them into the water along with the marrow bones, deglazed the pan in which I had re-roasted the bones, added that in, and that is helping considerably to add a nice rich color. So that so far, at least in batch three, we still have some nice color. I'm not sure how batch four is gonna be because they are, getting a little pretty much used, so uh, we'll see. But at least for batch three, I'm happy to report that I have uh, a nice rich color and I suspect it'll have a nice rich taste. But now the real test. Let's see if it's gelatinous. Oh, look at this. It's magnificent. I've got to say, I'm really impressed. Look at how beautifully, can you see that? How beautifully gelatinous that is. And it's a nice color. Look at that, it's like jello. This came really well for batch number three. So look at that. I think this is a success. I think this is definitely a success. So the secret is start your first batch with some bones that are your insurance policy. Some oxtails, some neck bones, some patellas, or some knuckles. You've got to have those in there in order to guarantee that you're gonna get some gelatinous consistency out of these perpetual batches. And the other thing that I think is important 
is to make sure you never really boil it. You know, you can just bring it up to a boil in that very first batch when we skim off the foam, but then we quickly turn it down to keep warm. Or if you're doing it on the cooktop, you know, to the lowest setting as possible so that you're not having a long rapid boil. Then I think the next tip is don't simmer it for more than 12 hours. And keeping it at the 180 degrees Fahrenheit, simmering it at that temperature for, for 12 hours, and making sure that some of the bones that are in your original batch that carry through for each successive batch are, are bones that are high in collagen. And, and those are the ones that have a lot of cartilage on the outside because it's the cartilage that's high in the collagen. Now the marrow bones certainly have some collagen in them that will be released into the liquid when you're simmering it, but they don't, they don't have as high amount of collagen as the cartilage does. So that's why those bones are very important. And another thing I want to mention about those, what I call the insurance policy bones, is inspect them. If they look after your first batch or your second batch that they're really spent, meaning they're really used, chances are that third batch may not come out gelatinous. The oxtail that I had uh, that was in my original batch was really big and it had a very large piece of cartilage in the middle. And I believe, you know, I've made so many batches now, I've had a lot going, I'm losing a little track. That's why I dehydrated some of it, because I've had multiple crock pots going and slow cookers and whatnot to test all of this. But I found that when I did on this particular batch, my third batch, when, it, when the bones were going in, those oxtails were still really in good shape and they had quite a bit of cartilage, the, the tail bone right, that goes right down the middle of the bone uh, that is very high in cartilage was still uh, jelly-like and it had not completely dissolved. So I had a little inclination that my third batch was going to come out well. Now, going into my fourth batch, I'm not as confident because my oxtails look pretty well spent. They look like they've really released a lot of collagen uh, already into, that, into this third batch. But I will definitely continue on and I will let you know how it goes. But generally, you know, as I've shared with uh, you in the past in previous videos, I'm comfortable getting two or three batches out of my bones. But as I've shared with you, I do have uh, YouTube and food blogger friends who have told me that they've had uh, luck with 12 batches and more. I find it fantastic. And if it were possible, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, so I will continue on and I'll see how batches four, five, and so on and so forth go. And I will definitely uh, give you updates when I get to a batch that's no longer gelatinous. So if you'd like to learn more about perpetual bone broth, be sure to subscribe to my channel and then click on this video over here where I show you how to get your perpetual bone broth going. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.